In this video, I'm going to be giving you guys a very detailed step-to-step -step guide on how to apply makeup. I've made a lot of makeup for beginners videos, but I realized I didn't really go in depth on makeup application, the reason why I do what I do when I apply makeup. So that is what I'll be doing in this video. So if you're interested, keep on watching. But if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and join the LJ family and also hit the bell so you're always notified of a new upload. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Okay. LJ, welcome to a channel where it's popping. Mm, welcome to a YouTube. All right, so the biggest, biggest thing that I've learned when it comes to makeup is blending. You have to take your time in blending, and when you practice blending, it becomes easier and easier, and your makeup just gets flawless the more you blend. And we're gonna be discussing all that in this video. So the first thing when it comes to applying makeup is primer. Primer is very important because it protects your skin and not only does it protect your skin but it creates like that smooth canvas for you to apply your makeup. Think of makeup application as like you're painting, you're a painter. You want to start off with a nice clean white canvas so the paint goes on smoothly. So that's the thing about primer is that it creates that smooth texture for makeup application when it comes to primer for people with normal to oily skin, I would recommend a primer that is hydrating for all over your face. The reason why hydrating products are important for people with oily skin is because it helps balance those oils. So you want to use a primer that is oil free and hydrating at the same time. And then after applying the hydrating primer all over your skin, I would recommend going in with a primer that is mattifying around the areas of your face that tend to be oily. So that's for oily skin. Now if you have normal to dry skin I would definitely recommend using only a hydrating primer you have no business using a mattifying primer if you got dry skin like you shouldn't even be touching a matte primer okay so a really good primer that I would recommend for people with dry skin is a ColourPop pretty fresh hyaluronic acid primer I like this primer because it's super moisturizing and very hydrating I definitely wouldn't recommend this for people with oily skin because I think this has a little bit of oils so with hydrating primers what I would recommend is to just rub it all over your face like you're applying a moisturizer and you want the primer to really sit on your skin really well and you want your skin skin to really absorb that primer. I like to let this primer sit for about three to five minutes so that my skin can absorb all that hydration. So when applying a matte primer, I would recommend just applying the primer and patting it onto your skin rather than rubbing it just because the matte primer is not supposed to be absorbed by your skin. It's supposed to just settle on your skin so when you apply makeup, the makeup can stick onto the primer. So for oily skin, a really, really good primer that I really love is the e.l.f. Pore less putty primer this one is ideal for people with a lot of pores I feel like this primer is perfect if you're somebody who is concerned about like your oiliness and you're looking for a really good matte primer I feel like the putty primer in the matte version is also really good these primers are very 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 affordable all right next we're gonna move on to foundation so for foundation for beginners I would highly recommend a foundation that is lightweight and light coverage the reason why I like lightweight coverage foundations for beginners because it feels very comfortable on your skin especially if you're not used to wearing makeup you don't want something that feels uncomfortable in your skin so if you have dry skin I would definitely recommend using a foundation that is more so luminous and radiant because those feel better on dry skin and if you have dry skin I would recommend using a foundation that is matte because matte foundations last longer and they prevent your skin from building oils over time so a really really good foundation that I I really love is the L'Oreal infallible up to 24 hour fresh wear foundation when it comes to foundation I like to start with one pump and then build your coverage as you go just because you don't want to go on with too much and then you know your face would be cakey so I like to go in with one pump so this is about one pump of this foundation I also have a video on how to match your foundation online I will leave it in the description box down below it is in the playlist for makeup for beginners so when you're blending out your foundation I I love using a beauty blender okay this bad boy is $20 very very expensive but I really like a beauty blender because it's easy to use and I feel like it blends out your foundation very flawlessly if you're somebody who thinks $20 is very expensive for a beauty sponge I would definitely recommend the elf sponges on 
honestly, these sponges are very similar to the beauty blenders. These are just way, way cheaper. You can get them from Ulta, you can get them from Target. I'll leave the link down below in the description for all the products that I'm using. Before using a beauty blender, you have to make sure the beauty blender is damp. If you squeeze the beauty blender, there's nothing that comes out. No water, no nothing, okay? You don't want a beauty blender that has water because it's gonna absorb the foundation. And also you wanna use a clean beauty blender, guys. I cannot emphasize this enough. A clean beauty blender will get your base, your foundation, your makeup to blend out really nice and it will give you the natural color of the foundation. So when I'm blending out my foundation, I'm just patting it on there, trying to completely blend it out. All right, so the next step after foundation is concealers. So the first reason why we use concealer is to cover up any discoloration on our skin, so any areas on our skin that is darker. The main concern for people is usually under their eyes when you have bags and it's dark around that area. This is called spot correcting or color correcting. So for that, I like to use a concealer that is close to my skin tone. But that step is very helpful for people who have dark circles under their eyes. Now, the second reason why we conceal is for highlighting. So highlighting is just to add that highlighting effect back onto our skin. So when it comes to highlighting, we highlight on the areas where light reflects on our skin. So light reflects on our skin on our forehead, T-zone area, as you guys can see, down the bridge of the nose and right here. So that is where you want to highlight. So my favorite concealers for beginners is the LA Girl Pro Conceal. Like these are like the OGs. These concealers are very cheap. They're like $5. And what I like to do when it comes to concealer is I like using a full coverage concealer. If you're not somebody who likes using full coverage concealers or you don't feel comfortable, try using a light coverage concealer so you don't apply too much. But today's video, I'm using this concealer, which is a full coverage concealer. So what I like to do is I like to start applying the concealer right where the bridge of my nose starts, which is right there. Doing this kind of gives the illusion that this part of your nose is a part of your T-zone area and you want to bring it outwards. I wouldn't recommend going all the way here because this area right here, when we blend it out, we want it to diffuse. We don't want it looking too much around this area. So you're going to diffuse it outward. So I would place about that much concealer around there. So to apply concealer on your forehead, you want to go a little bit above your forehead. I would say three quarters of the way. Kind of create like a semi-circle and fill it in. And you don't want to place too much unless you've got a big forehead, okay? And then what you want to do is you want to bring it down the bridge of your nose. I like to just go in like one line down the bridge of my nose like that. I place a little bit on my cupid's bow so it's not too much. And then for my chin area, I like to go right below my lip. I don't like to bring the concealer all the way down here because I don't feel like the light really reflects like right on my chin. So what I like to do with concealer, I like to let it set for like three to five minutes so it gets like really tacky and then I blend it out. Doing that kind of leaves the coverage on the concealer, but if you're in a rush and you don't have time, it's fine. You can just totally blend it out. Just make sure that when you're blending it out, you're not like completely blending out. You just want to tap on it a little bit to blend it out really slowly and making sure to leave that coverage on there so to blend out the concealer I like using the sharp part of a beauty blender if you want to use a brush I would recommend using an angle brush like this so it's flat but it's still angle at the same time but honestly I think concealer is best blended with a beauty sponge or a beauty blender so using the sharp part of the beauty blender I'm just gonna go ahead and blend it out and what I like to do is I like to make sure that the coverage is on there and what I like to do with what's left on the sponge Sponge. I like to bring it on my eyelid area if I'm not putting on eyeshadow. You want to make sure to focus really under your eye because that's where the creasing is. So you want to make sure the concealer does not crease under your eye. And you see these harsh lines around this area right here, the area right there. I like to get rid of it with this sponge. So I just go back with the sponge that I use for the foundation so that everything looks nice and smooth and you don't see any harsh lines from the concealer. So as I'm blending out my chin, I'm going back in with the foundation sponge and I'm getting rid of the harsh lines. So like I mentioned earlier, the most important thing when it comes to makeup is make sure everything is blended. So going back and forth with 
that sponge kind of helps everything blend out seamlessly so for the forehead area I don't like moving the concealer around I like just blending it out making sure to focus only on this area you don't want to bring it all the way out here and out around this area because those areas of your skin is where you have that shadow so really where the light reflects like on this area right here is the only area you should place concealer so when you're blending it out make sure to blend it only on the areas that you can see that light reflection so for the concealer on my nose I like using a very small eyeshadow brush one that looks like this and what I like to do is I like to just blend out the concealer bringing it upwards towards my forehead area and then I'm gonna blend it down the bridge of my nose doing this kind of gives your skin that natural contour do you guys see how this looks contoured but we haven't really gone in with any contour all right so the next step is contour so this is one of my favorite parts because I feel like it brings back dimension onto my skin so when we apply foundation and concealer the dimension around skin is lost we don't look real like you know what I mean it looks like just like one type of color so we like to bring back that dimension so when it comes to contour you want to contour based on the shape of your face so if you have a round shaped face I would definitely say go in with a softer contour a contour that is maybe too to three shades darker than your skin so that you're not really bringing a structure that is not really there on your skin so it's better to contour softly when you have a round shaped face now if you have a long structured face like I do it's better to use a contour that is maybe three to four shades darker so if you guys can see like right here you can see my cheekbone starting from here and ending from right here and also my jawline is very very sharp like I, I actually have a jawline you can see it so I have to contour it right there so I would definitely recommend contouring if you have a structured face so the contour I'm gonna be using in today's video is the Colourpop pretty fresh concealer this is in the shade 210 neutral so when contouring you want to make sure to start contouring where your cheekbone starts and I like to bring it down I just like using like one stroke so that you don't apply too much especially if you're a beginner you don't want to go in with crazy contour so just one stroke is good and then I just apply a little bit on my forehead area if you have a big forehead go ahead add a little bit more you know because that will kind of give the illusion that your forehead is not as big as it is and then I like to go in with a little bit around this area we're applying the contour on the areas that we have that shadow so we can see a shadow right here we're gonna contour right there because I have a structured jawline and then for contour on my nose I like to place it right where my eyebrows end and bring it a little bit down I don't like bringing it down like right here because we're gonna use a brush to diffuse it So it looks nice and natural. So to blend out the contour I'm gonna use the concealer sponge, but I'm gonna use the backside blend it out I love these concealers because they're so easy to blend So if you're somebody who's not used to contouring I feel like these are perfect because they're not hard to blend so using the backside I like to just go back and forth. You don't want to move it around too much You don't want to get it on this area down here because that's not where the contour contour is supposed to be so you just want to bounce it back and forth up and down to blend it out You want to take your time while blending out the contour make sure it's nice and blended and then blend out the jawline area and if you have a round shaped face I wouldn't recommend doing this but I feel like this is very important because it kind of gives the illusion that your jawline is very very structured and it's there and it doesn't make it seem like you have a double chin you know what I'm saying like you don't want to look like this okay so you definitely want to apply a little bit of contour because sometimes I'd be looking like I have a double chin and I'm like I need a contour right there so after after blending out the contour I like to go back with the concealer sponge and get rid of all the harsh lines so going back and forth with products like foundation concealer and contour kind of gives you that blended look when it comes to makeup all right so for my nose contour I like using an angle brush like this this is the morphe e62 brush I like to place the brush like this and put the product towards my eyebrows and then whatever is left I like to 
just bring it slowly, bring it down the bridge of my nose so that it diffuses downwards and not upwards. And so I'm gonna do the same thing for this side. I like to just brush the product upwards towards my eyebrows and that kind of gives that natural shadow. And then you want to bring it downwards and let it naturally fade off downwards. And then what I like to do is I like to go in with the sponge that I use for the concealer to get rid of all the harsh lines. So you wanna go back and forth, like I mentioned earlier, and blend out everything. So you wanna go on the sides, get rid of those harsh lines, make everything really blended. I'm gonna go upward as well. And then I like to just tap a little bit of the concealer on top of the contour to simmer it down a little bit so that it looks nice and faded. You don't wanna do it too much until you don't see the contour anymore. You wanna do it just enough so that the contour fades a little bit and looks very natural. So if you wanna use a brush for a contour, a good brush to use would be an angled shape brush like this. The reason why sometimes I use this is because it's very angled so it can get on the areas of your face that are angled. So like right here on your forehead, on your cheekbones, and I just go back and forth and blend it out. But I honestly think when you're using a concealer to contour, it will be easier for you to use a beauty blender rather than a brush. All right, so the next step is setting powder. So for setting powder, I personally like using a setting powder that is oil absorbing. So for people who have oily skin, an oil absorbing setting powder is perfect because it absorbs the oils, especially on your T-zone area and on your forehead where oils are usually formed after hours of wearing makeup. So a really good oil absorbing setting powder that I like to use is the Black Opal Deluxe Finishing Setting Powder. This is in the shade Medium 03. If you're somebody who doesn't really form any oils on your skin, then you don't really need an oil absorbing setting powder. You can go in with a translucent setting powder, a loose setting powder, any type of setting powder. So if you're of my skin tone and you're looking for a good setting powder that is golden, this one would be perfect. I try to stay away from using like white translucent setting powders because I feel like they don't look good on my skin tone. So I have an in-depth video on how to set your concealer without forming any creasing, giving you that flawless finish and that's also in that makeup for beginners playlist in the description box i personally don't like baking especially for my dry skin because it leaves my under eyes feeling very uncomfortable feeling very dry i feel like a good alternative for baking is using a damp beauty sponge especially the sponge that i used for the concealer so what i like to do is i like to use the damp beauty sponge what i'm doing is i'm just tapping it on top of that setting powder to get it on there and then what i like to do is I like to just tap it onto the back of my hand like this to get rid of all the excess this step is very important because when you're applying the setting powder it doesn't leave any patches under your eyes so it's so important for you to press the powder onto the back of your hand and then what I like to do is I like to start from the bridge of my nose to kind of give that natural contour and I just like pressing the powder onto my skin focusing on my under eye because there could be a lot of creasing around that area so you want to make sure to really set your under eye. So you just want to press the powder on there. Alright, so if you're not somebody who is a big fan of sponges, you can definitely use a brush to set your concealer. The type of brush that I like to use is this kind of brush right here. So a brush that is angled on the sides but is also at the same time really flat. This type of brush is perfect for you to set your under eye and press it on there. So I like to take a little bit of the setting powder on the cap and I like to press it on there so that you're not applying too much. And then what I like to do is I like to dust off the excess and then I like to just press the powder onto my skin around that area. So you want to press it so that it really sets the concealer. So I'll also like to set down the bridge of my nose. I'm gonna use that same brush that I used for the concealer and I'm just gonna tap the setting powder down the bridge of my nose in a straight line. All right, so the next step in the makeup application is bronzers. Bronzer is basically supposed to bring back that warmth back onto your skin because when we apply all these products, it looks like blood is not running on our skin. So we need to bring back that warmth to make us look real so we don't look like zombies. So I like to use a 
bronzer that is warm toned so a really good bronzer that i'm going to be using today that i feel like is very affordable and very beginner friendly is the revolution glow splendor matte bronzer i really like this bronzer because it's just really nice it goes on smoothly and it's perfect for deeper skin tones so for bronzer the type of brush i like to use is the morphe m527 brush so this is a tapered brush so a tapered brush is a brush that is very flat on the sides so i like to use this brush because it's perfect if you're applying bronzer it kind of gives you that contoured sharp look so what i like to do is i like to place a little bit of this bronzer just tap on it dust off the excess and just in circular motion go back and forth where the contour is and i like to bring this all the way up towards my ears and i just like to build the bronzer so i don't place too much so i'm just going back and forth I like to place a little bit of bronzer on my forehead area. I usually don't go in with a lot because we've already contoured around that area. And then on my jawline, of course. And then what I like to do, of course, is go back in with the sponge that I use for the setting powder to get rid of any harsh lines that you see when you placed the bronzer. So this is the part where I was talking about it's important to blend your makeup. So you wanna go back and forth and make sure all those harsh lines don't show. All right, so the next step is eyebrows. I have a very detailed eyebrow tutorial in the playlist, and I'm gonna go ahead and do my eyebrows off camera because eyebrows can get very complicated. So if you're looking for an eyebrow tutorial, I do have one. So I'm gonna quickly go ahead and do my eyebrows. All right, so my eyebrows are completed, so I'm gonna move on to the eyes. So I'm not doing much for the eyes because this is a beginner-friendly makeup tutorial. I do have an eyeshadow video where I talk about like common eyeshadow mistakes that I used to make and how to correct them um it's basically an eyeshadow tutorial video i'll also leave that in the description box down below i feel like i've been saying that throughout the video but you guys get what i'm saying i'm gonna just go ahead and set my eyelids so i'm gonna use the same setting powder that i used i like to do this when i'm not going in with any eyeshadow just to kind of create a neutral base patting that on my eyelid and the brush that i'm using is the morphe eb13 brush so placing setting powder right on the eyelid area around here is going to get rid of the creasing on your eyelids after applying concealer and then using a round fluffy brush i'm just going to dip a little bit of this bronzer so i'm just placing a little bit of my eyelid to bronze it up a little bit to make it look a little bit realistic and this kind of just gives like a natural makeup look i like using a gel liner to line my eyes because i feel like it's the easiest thing to do and i like using a brush with a sharp tip like this to apply the eyeliner i just feel like it's a bit easier i'm just going to place this right on my lash line in short small strokes so it creates a very straight line and this part is totally optional you don't have to do this but i like lining my eyes before applying any lashes so i'm gonna go ahead and apply mascara and i'm pretty sure everybody knows how to apply mascara so I'm gonna go ahead and apply my lashes off camera. I have a very, very detailed lash application video as well in the description box. I'm gonna quickly apply my lashes off camera and then I'll be back. All right, so we're finally done with the eyes. I tried to keep it very simple. I just placed a little bit of mascara underneath my eyes. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply blush. So for blush, I like a blush that is very rich and shows up really well on my skin. So I personally feel like blush is very optional, so you don't have to put on blush. But I like applying blush. I like using a blush that is more so on the pink side, sometimes red. So the blush palette that I'm going to be using is the BH Cosmetics. This is the Chocolate Cherry Truffle Blush Palette. So this is the Real Techniques Blush Brush. That is a tongue twister right there. So I like using this blush brush. I like using this brush for blush because it's super easy to apply. It is a fluffy brush. It's very lightweight. So what I like to do is I like to pick up quite a bit of blush. I also like placing it on the back of my hand so it's not too much and for blush I like starting on the apples of my cheeks so right around this area right here I like bringing the blush all the way up towards my ears so when you turn around this side the blush looks blended it doesn't look like a patch of blush right there and then nothing is like right here so I like to focus mainly on the apples of my cheeks and then bring whatever is left on the brush upwards towards my ears so that 
that everything looks well blended. And then I like to go in with the sponge that I use for the setting powder and get rid of any harsh lines. All right, so next we're gonna move on to highlighters. So for a highlighter, I like using a fan brush to apply my highlighter. I feel like it's the easiest way to apply highlighter, but there's also another brush that you can use for highlighter. This is the Morphe M501 brush. I like using a brush like this and pick up a little bit of the pigment and apply the highlighter on. I don't feel like this is beginner friendly because I feel like this picks up a lot of highlighter. So if you're going to strobe your skin and make it super highlighted, I would definitely say use this brush. But if you're somebody who's going for something natural, something that's not too much, and for a beginner, I would definitely recommend a fan brush because I feel like it applies it a little softer. So the highlighter that I'm using today is the Maybelline Master Chrome Highlighter. This one is in the shade Molten Rose Gold. So what I like to do is I just like to bring the highlighter up towards my hairline and I like to apply highlighter like all over this area right here just so that it looks really nice blended and natural and just kind of fade it off so I like using the highlighter brush angle like this and I just go back and forth back and forth and I'm focusing around the highest points of my cheekbones and you want the highlighter to look natural so you want to bring it up towards your eyebrows not too much to where it looks artificial but just a little bit and then you want to bring it down towards your cheeks and I usually stop like around right here where my cheeks start to show and so I like to place a little bit on my cupid's bow because I do have pretty sharp cupid's bow and then using my pinky finger I like to place a little bit of the highlighter on there and place a little bit on the button of my nose you only want to do this if you have a button nose if you don't I don't really think it's necessary and then I literally place a very small amount right on the bridge of my nose like right there and so I'm just picking up a little bit and just pressing it on there with my finger and then whatever is left on the brush I'm just gonna place a little bit on my forehead just a little bit not too much all right so lastly we're gonna move on to the lips so I'm gonna start off with lip liner I love lining my lips with like a brown lip liner especially if you're of my skin tone I usually don't go in with a lip liner that is lighter than my skin tone so the lip liner I'm gonna use today is the NYX professional this is the lip pencil in the shade espresso so to line my lips I like starting on the bottom lip and for the bottom lip I like overlining my bottom lip and this is totally optional this is just based on the shape of my lips just like that and then I like to actually line the top part so I'm not overlining the top part of my lip and then today for my lips, I'm gonna use the Revlon Glass Shine Lipstick. This one is in the shade Glazed Mauve. All right, last but not least, I'm gonna set my skin and my favorite setting mist is the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. So you wanna place the setting mist a little bit far from your face so that it's not too much. It doesn't leave like clumps of that setting powder on your skin. You want the setting mist to diffuse throughout your skin and go on really smoothly. All right guys, so that is it for this video. That is it for this makeup look. I really hope this video was helpful. I hope this video helped a lot of you guys who were looking to learn how to wear makeup I hope it was informative enough try to go really in detail about every step um, I tried to give enough information for those of you guys who didn't know I focused mainly on like the major things but I have like in-depth tutorials of like specifics like eyeliner eyebrows eyelashes because I feel like those are more complex so I'll have all that in the description box down below in the makeup for beginners playlist so if you found this video helpful don't forget to to leave me a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and join the LJ family also hit the bell so you're always notified of a new upload but other than that I will see you guys in my next video okay LJ welcome to a channel where it's popping you better subscribe got it on lock yeah got it on lock yeah mm, we need more likes more views yeah you can leave a comment too Welcome to a YouTube. Mm. Welcome to a YouTube.